Breakfast with Luke Knight. 97.3 Apple because you know, if you get caught with your mobile phone in your car, even if you're a, even if you're a passenger these days, you get buried alive. Anyway, on to uh, my next feature, which basically earlier in the month I was contacted by someone in the West Country who has re- recently written his own novel. It's pretty, you know, pretty mean feat, isn't it? Writing a novel. Uh, he's called Tom Dawn. Uh, I had a sit down with him earlier last week and found out a little bit more about this book that he's written. So your book, Descent, without giving too much away, fill us in on what it's about. At the beginning, a chap called Mark has everything go wrong for him. He loses his best buddy, he loses his confidence and his job, he even loses his moral compass. And that's just the beginning. But unwittingly, he's also ticking all the boxes to fit perfectly into somebody else's scheme. And so, before too long, he finds himself on the adventure of his life And the question is whether it will make him or break him. Ultimately, um, I was always going to write a book, uh, which was an action thriller. And I had a number of sources uh, where um, inspiration came from. One of those uh, was a book by a, a fairly famous journalist called John Ronson. He is probably best known for writing the book called The Men Who Stare at Goats. Less well known, but quite famous. He wrote a book called The Psychopath Test. And reading this uh, gave me quite a huge insight, really, into some of the complexities behind these people called psychopaths, um, who we read about a lot in, uh, in popular fiction and see a lot of in drama, but maybe we don't understand quite fully enough and maybe those are the, some of the most interesting people, and they live among us. Have you met any of those sorts of people? I think I've worked for one or two. I take it that was the inspiration behind this, this kind of book? Ultimately, I think when, uh, when a book uh, becomes interesting, it's about putting characters together and finding where the dynamic lies with those. And so the character Mark, his life's in a, in a real mess, and he's lost the equilibrium. And so that's when interesting things begin to happen. And because he's out of his pattern, he's meeting a lot of different people and he's doing some slightly unusual uh, and unhappy things from his point of view. And so he meets a series of people until he meets the fateful person who is the one who is actually going to be the cause of the adventure which, uh, which fulfills the rest of the story. I think if you are the sort of person who digests regular action thrillers from James Bond to Jason Bourne, then you're not going to be too disappointed. But also, I would like to say it's, it's quite a thoughtful thriller. So for people who are interested in some of the ideas uh, in a little bit more depth, moral issues and questions about the believability of, uh, of the plot then there might be a little bit more food for you in there. So how long did it take you to write, Tom? That was a big surprise. I figured that I would knock this job off in, uh, in just a few months, but it took as long as having a baby. Slightly less painful at the end, but I did have to take a few months off, really, to knock it on the head. So from writing the first word on the first piece of paper to the final full stop on the end of the final sentence and the inevitable rewrite that you have to do at the end that was most of nine months would you have another i'm already expecting are you already oh congratulations (laughs) i'm so happy for you so are there any points of this new book that you can tell us at all i have in fact just returned from a holiday in sunny malta in its capital city valletta and that is not unconnected with researching the sequel to the first book. Your techniques for writing, I know a lot of people like to shut themselves away in a darkened room, maybe fling themselves in the shed where there's a lovely trickling river down the bottom of the garden which they go and write next to. Have you got any methods in which you write with? I I certainly do. It's called turn up at your desk at 8.30. Close to total silence as you can achieve and get your fingers on the keyboard, start typing and let nothing stop you. 
because you can't afford writer's block, you can't afford a distraction. You need to engross yourself in the story. And sometimes that can be difficult. The words don't always flow naturally. People talk about writer's block. If you have writer's block, then there is something wrong with your technique. Having experimented with a few ideas, I did actually write out my chapter plan. I knew roughly how many words I was going to write, so I kept a chart of how many I expected to write. If I was having a series of bad days, I would see the line begin to dip below target. That was a big motivator to sit down, work harder, work into the evening or a little bit over the weekend to catch up. Uh, and always guided by um, a fairly firm set of directions for what had to happen in the plot. Is it something which you always had an interest in, or do you think it stayed dormant until this point in your life, or was it something that you took an interest in very early on? I first had the idea about actually writing a book, a novel, when I was about 20. So I've been thinking about it for 30 years or thereabouts, and... There's always been a higher priority. Ultimately, day came when I was thinking about what's my bucket list, and I decided this was the one thing that I most wanted to do. So now that it's here, does it feel good? There's a huge sense of achievement, no, no doubt about it. Uh, and actually to have wanted to do something for a great deal of time and then to have completed it... Uh, there is no beating that good warm feeling and um, I have to give credit to a lot of friends and family who've supported me and shown a lot of interest in in how's it going that's been very motivating and also to the people who've read the book and given their feedback and I've got to say apart from the sense of achievement of having done the job at the end of it I've created something, I've made something that other people can uh, share in, uh, read and enjoy, and really that's doubled the satisfaction for me. Have you had any good reviews about this book? I've had some reviews. Um, friends and family who've read it have said it was a page-turner, which was very satisfying, because I think I've probably worked harder on that than on anything else. Always I was asking myself at the question at the bottom of every, every page, is the reader going to want to turn the page and find out what happens on the next bit? Or am I leaning on them a little bit to, uh, to uh, you know, give me some credibility and, uh, and, and wait to see if it's going to take off? And in some ways, the, uh, the real plot uh, takes a little time to, uh, to take off. But there's always some food for people at every stage. And... That's certainly been something that's I planned and the feedback that I've had has been quite positive about that. Last question would be, where can people buy this book and, and how much is it going for? You can get it anywhere online. The um, paperback edition is £7.99, so Amazon, uh, Waterstones to order. Uh, there's also a Kindle edition, which is £6.50, I believe. There's also a Goodreads giveaway do have a look on the Goodreads website. The title is Descent, the author is Tom Dorn, and stick your name down there. If you're lucky, you'll get a free copy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Luke. That's Devon author Tom Dorn there talking about his new book, which has just been released. Fascinating stuff. And as Tom said, if you get yourself onto the Goodreads website, typing in his name, which is Tom Dorn, uh, you can type in his book Descent, sign up and register, and you can bag yourself a free copy. 97.